These days, if I open my DMs on Telegram, Twitter, or LinkedIn, everybody's asking just one question, is coding still relevant in 2025? And that's the question I want to help answer in this video. So as you know, I'm the founder at Armor AI, and I've built companies before, I've worked at companies before, and I have a programming career of more than 10 years, and I've been programming for more than 20 years of my life. So this question is very close to my heart, and I've been teaching programming on YouTube since the past four to five years. So this question, is coding still relevant? And some other questions like, are we cooked? Are junior devs dead? Should I even continue coding? Is tech dead? These are the kind of questions that I get asked on a daily basis on our Discord server, uh, the official Discord server for this YouTube channel. Do check it out in, in case you're not there on, on that yet. And also in my DMs. So this is what I want to help answer right now. So it's 2025 right now, it's the age of AI. And every major CEO like Sam Altman, Jensen Huyang, says that coding is going to be completely irrelevant in the next few years and that everything will happen with AI, okay? And the timeline that, that they give us is around 2025, 2027, but the reality is slightly different from, in my opinion, right now. We still have to correct a lot of AI-generated code, right? So if you use Cursor or WinSurf right now, you can't just push it to production. You have to review it. You have to correct uh, many of the things in that code. I even if you don't correct it yourself, you use prompts to correct it, but you still have to do a lot of work. So it's, I, I don't think it's just there yet. And 2027 uh, is just two years away, and I am not sure if, if we will be there even at that time. But the thing is, this timeline that they're giving us is not guaranteed. So if the models, they don't get good enough till 2027, there's nothing we can do about that because the timeline hasn't been given by some body or organization. It's, it's being given by experts like, like Sam Altman, right? Um, and they're, and experts are often wrong, when they're, especially when they're in a tech bubble, that's when they're especially wrong. So it's being said that models may not get better at coding. So now, if you look at the recent reports, they're saying that models might not get better at coding now because we are out of data to train them and there isn't enough data, right? So um, what, I, what, I've, what I'm seeing is that the current models are not able to fully replace junior developers as well. So because I have two junior developers at my firm, and they use Cursor, WinSurf, Lovable, all of that stuff. And they've just become faster with that. But they cannot avoid learning something like Golang or Rust. They cannot avoid that completely because, uh, and, and actually what I'm noticing is that in fact, they need to understand Go in more details now. So they could get away with not knowing a lot of Golang earlier, but now because uh, the AI, right, the AI model that they use will end up generating really heavy code or, or code that's meant for experts, right? Because that's how AI works. So they now need to understand all the uh, intricacies of Golang even more now to understand the, the, gen the code that AI generated. And there are two ways to look at this whole thing now, right? So the, the first way which everybody uh, is following is that one senior developer right now can replace multiple junior developers because AI can do a lot of the boilerplate stuff. And it can do a lot of documentation, test cases, all the stuff that you would give to a junior developer. But there is another side to this coin, and the other side is that two junior developers can also now do the work of a senior developer, because fixing difficult problems, finding efficient solutions, shipping way faster, using code reviewers and bug fixers, so you can, do, you can, you can arm your junior developers with all of that, and using AI to understand, and they can also use AI to understand difficult programming concepts. So now on LinkedIn, you'll see that, oh, junior developers are dead because, you know, uh, we don't need them anymore because a senior engineer can just use AI. But no, like the junior developers can also use AI and also do the work of a senior engineer. And they, in fact, they are uh, a bit cheaper, like uh, actually a lot cheaper than hiring just one senior engineer. So different companies are, are doing different things. They're obviously, the companies who are doing this are way fewer than companies that are doing this. I agree, but I don't know how that will be in three to six months. Now, companies that already have a lot of senior engineers might not hire new junior devs. Now, this is something that I completely agree with. And you can see this happening all around you because companies that already have senior engineers, they are not hiring junior devs at least this year. They're sitting out of placements and, and, new, um, and, and posting new jobs on websites. Because what they're thinking is that, hey, we already have all of these senior engineers. Why don't you just uh, help them, like give them AI tools and help them ship more? rather than babysitting new devs. Uh, now, senior engineers, if you, if you know any, uh, they hate, they hate uh, babysitting new developers. Right? They don't want to mentor them. They don't want to uh, you know, um, sit and review code. That's, this is the thing that they hate. And what companies are realizing uh, is that if you remove that friction 
right? You can just ship so much faster because you don't have to tell these guys what to do. They already know what to do. Just give them the list of features and they'll start building them really fast. Okay, so uh, so they, they, they are seeing a boost in productivity right now, I agree. And, uh, but, the, but the other side of that coin is that companies that are being, build, being built newly, right? Companies that are being started in 2025, especially in the application layer, which is like a, you know, application layer, as, as you know, it's, it's not very critical, right? You don't have to write very heavy or uh, extremely high quality code uh, or extremely efficient code, right? So these guys might want junior developers that can act as senior developers, okay? So that's the right place to apply if you're a junior developer. Now, a lot of people ask me, hey, I'm just starting out of college, where do I apply? Application layer companies, right? You don't want to go in the infra layer companies or, or, or senior, or sorry, or hardcore engineering firms that build dev tooling, uh, dev tooling, et cetera. You don't want to apply for those companies. It's going to be extremely, extremely difficult getting in there. So at Armor AI, even though we are a dev tooling company, right, we still have things like front ends, we have VS Code plugins, all of that, that can be shipped faster, and junior devs are perfect for that. This is what I've, I've realized, and I'm sure a lot of other founders will also realize. Uh, now, I realize things faster because I'm, uh, you know, I, I code daily, as you know. Uh, that's how I put those YouTube videos, uh, and, and, and that's how I maintain my GitHub. So I'm very close to um, the cutting edge, right, uh, because that's, what I, that's my job. But there are many founders that are not technical founders and they're uh, you know, marketing or their operations or finance related founders. And they, 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 don't, they haven't realized this yet, but they will realize this yet. Uh, they, they will realize this very soon uh, that uh, developers, you know, junior developers with AI may not be very good for uh, handling like very complex backend engineering stuff, but they're very good for front ends. They're very good for <laughs> VS Code plugins that can, or, or Google Chrome plugins. Uh, they're very, very good for that if you, if you arm them with, uh, with AI tools. So what if you don't, now the question is, what if you don't understand AI generated code and just generate it and use it, right? So many people think that, oh, uh, Maybe I don't need to learn coding anymore. I can just vibe code and I can just create a lot of AI generated slop and then just get away with it. Uh, the problem is you can build something very fast with that, but that project cannot be maintained. And that is the whole issue because software is not about just building. It's actually about maintaining and also extending it in the sense you would want to build more features in the, in the future, right? And those features, they might not gel very well with the previous features if the project structure hasn't been built properly. And only senior engineers know that a great foundation to the software, that means a great project structure, uh, you know, and, and, and a great structure in general to coding practices, all of that ensures that your project is extensible later on. And it's designed in that way. So it's, it's difficult to uh, build that kind of software right now with AI. Uh, and it's difficult to then maintain it and extend it uh, and if you want to build more features. So, and you can't do it if you don't understand what AI has generated for you. Now, uh, AI tools are really good in the hands of senior developers, but may not be that great in the hands of somebody who doesn't know coding. This, this is what I've, I've realized up until now. So now here are the issues. So we're not sure if AI models will get exponentially better now, right? So you have all those news, which people are saying that, hey, we don't have any more data to train AI models with and uh, AI models can't really get exponentially better. Now, there are also reports where people are saying that they're using synthetic data generation to train those AI models. But those, uh, but those practices will actually make the models incrementally better. So you can add those chain of thoughts, you can add all of that stuff, but that only makes the model incrementally better, but not exponentially better at coding, right? So that's the, that's the issue now. So we will have to build projects with code. Uh, foreseeably in the, near, in the near future, what I see is that code is not going away anywhere. Now, even AI, right? Uh, AI also is going to have to write code. We don't have a magical technology that AI can say tomorrow that, hey, I don't need to write code, but I can still generate applications. We're not there yet. Like, that's, that's quite far away from, the, from now, right? So, so you have to work with code. So you either have to write it yourself or you have to generate it with AI. But AI-generated code needs to be understood, managed, and extended. So these three things are kind of important. And uh, even with Cursor and WinSurf, the context windows are just not there yet. Like they're not able to go through millions of lines of code and then uh, tell you the right place to add the right feature. I don't, I, I've not at least seen that right now, right? Uh, I use Cursor every day uh, and, and I use Win, WinSurf every day. So you can, uh, and you can also test it out for yourself. So we have, and it's also get, it also gets expensive, right? After some time. Anyway, so we have to work at companies that already have massive code bases. So right, it, right now uh, your, 
your you know the the problem that you have right now is that okay you know there are these AI tools but uh, you know what do you do now with that because you still have to go to work at a company that already has a massive massive code base and the thing is we don't know what will happen in the future and we can only live in the present because we have to pay rent today you have to pay your rent today you don't you don't it's not in the future right you can't just say that AI is here so. I don't have to worry about rent. So what do you want to do to today? So the thing is, um, a lot of us engineers, because we use Twitter a lot, we get into this echo chamber where we think, oh, now AI has taken away everything. There's nothing left. Let's go back to farming. Uh, before you do that, just realize that the reality, reality that, that you know, is being fed to you on Twitter is not the actual reality. The actual reality is like you have to look around what's happening. And uh, you have to live in the present. Living in the present is very important, is what I've realized, because like I, like I said, you have to pay rent today. So no way, so uh, right now, in the present, there's no way to avoid learning coding really well. So you have to learn to code really, really well. That's, that's how the things are as of now, in the, in the present. So um, yes, people are saying that in the future it might not be true, you don't have to do this anymore. But future is future, right? It's, and we live in the present. So ask anyone that's getting hired in 2025, 20, ask them. Do they still need to code? And the answer is for sure, yes. Right? If you apply into my company, the first thing I'm going to give you is, is a problem to solve with code. Right? So if anything, uh, they want deeper knowledge now because they assume that, oh, and everybody knows the basics, right? You can just learn the basics from ChatGPT or you have like so many YouTube videos, just learn the basics really fast. And um, now they want deeper knowledge. Now they're looking for people who can build projects, right? So this is what I've been doing on YouTube since the past, 20, uh, past three to four years, since 2021, right? I've been showing you how to build projects. So now that's going to be very important. So build a portfolio of like really killer projects. That's going to be very important because everybody knows the basics of, of coding and everybody can, can write code. They need builders now. Okay, so, uh, what's, so where, where am I leading you with this? So do I then suggest not to use ChatGPT, Cursor, V0, Windsurf, Lovable, all of that? I, I, so the answer is no. I suggest that you use them, but you use them to learn the programming language itself. Use them as your tutor in real time. Like you have a massive code base, you just joined a company, Use uh, Cursor to go through the code base to learn about it uh, and to understand it better. And maybe generate some code, uh, but, but not like, don't make it rewrite the entire file or something like that, okay? Don't do something stupid like that. And, um, or, or don't <laughs> use it to build an entire feature. That'll be like extremely stupid if you do that, okay? Don't do that. Just use it to learn the, the programming language, the, the nuances much better. And do I recommend generating the code with AI code generators? Yes, I do, by all means. But make sure, like, uh, so it should be like in, in balance, like I mentioned, right? Not the entire file or not the entire folder, not the entire project, not an entire feature, don't do that. So, but make sure you know the programming language really well before you do that, because, um, because you use, uh, before you use anything given by AI in production. So that's the critical word here, before you use anything given by AI in production. Don't push anything to production before you know what it is, what it is, right? So be very careful if you work for an organization that has products with important features. Now, do I recommend using plugins for auto-completion, etc.? Yes, I do that, but again, do not depend on them. They can be very detrimental if you're planning to appear for interview rounds at serious engineering firms where they put you in a coding related task where there's a browser environment and you don't have your favorite IDE or plugins to help you out. So, uh, and I've had many mentees lose great positions because of this. Just don't become dependent on such plugins. So other tutorials or other, other people on YouTube will encourage you to use them as much as possible as they save time, right? Save time in air quotes. But I want to caution you against them. Uh, don't depend on them. Don't like become a zombie coder who just depends on this plugin and autocomplete and AI. That's not going to help you if you want to appear for interviews. So uh, then how do you get confident? How do you feel confident? Now, there are a lot of people who, uh, because AI, right? You have this whole layer of abstraction of these AI tools that generate all the code for you. So you feel less confident than ever of the code that has been generated or that you have pushed into production or that you have built the project with. You feel less confident than ever because you don't manually write it with your own hands. So how do you feel confident as a Golang developer anymore after 2025? Uh, and how do you not get imposter syndrome? And where can you actually, and, and where you can actually go to any company or open source project and start contributing without feeling over, overwhelmed, right? So even if you go to a company now, if you join a new company and you, or you, uh, you know, uh, start contributing to an open source project, you will feel overwhelmed. Even though you have AI now, you will feel extremely overwhelmed uh, and, and you will feel um, nervous because, you know, what if the code that you write ends up uh, creating an outage, right? So there's only one way, 
that is rely on the compiler. This is the thing that I've been saying in the past three to four years on YouTube, right? Uh, do not depending on depend on your coding skills. Do not depend on plugins. Do not depend on anything else. Rely on the compiler. This is why I write shit code on YouTube, right? When I build a video, but I fix everything when I start like run the code in the compiler. That's the single source of truth. Do not try to act. Uh, do not try to think that you're smarter than the compiler, and then you can write really high quality code, and you don't have, you don't get any bugs, right? Like I get a lot of comments like that on my YouTube, right? Those are the kind of people who will never get hired at a serious engineering company. You have to get good at debugging. Don't think that you can write the best quality code in one, in one go. You won't be able to do that. That's not practical, okay? And I've been around since the time of C C plus plus, right? That's how old I am. Uh, I'm like uh, probably a vampire or something right now, right? Uh, and we don't, we didn't have any fancy IDEs or plugins. So I've been through the C, C++, uh, you know, era, the Java era, and then uh, the whole PHP, and uh, I've survived through all of that, like Ruby on Rails. I'm ancient, right? So all the debugging happened only after compiling the code. There was no other way to know uh, that there was something wrong with the code. And also there were things, there were very less things to mess up the code. So now you have autocomplete and all that, that will completely mess up your code. So we didn't have autocomplete, we didn't have any AI code uh, that, that won't compile. And, uh, and, and something that would introduce more bugs, right? So we didn't have any plugins that would get the right packages for you. In my case, they get the wrong packages all, all the time. So debugging uh, is what you need to be good at. You need to just rely on the compiler, right? That's how. Uh, and and you need to you need to learn languages only languages that are very that have very good compilers like the Rust uh, programming language or GoLang just or, or C C plus plus stuff like that right. Uh, so the compiler is your best friend. So once you learn to depend on the compiler, you can do great things. Write bad code, but also fix it later very easily. This is what I do, right? So this is why if you've seen my projects that I've built, you'll realize that I'm always super relaxed and I make tons of mistakes and I don't edit the video. I don't edit the video. I don't edit out my mistakes, right? I keep all of them even the typos, all of them. So I keep the ugly part of building uh, building something. So when you build something, it's it gets ugly, right? So I wanna show you how ugly it gets, uh, but I also fix everything at the end in all of my videos, okay? And this just shows you how with languages like Golang and Rust that have strong compiler checks, you can be very chill and relaxed while coding because the compiler will help you out later. So you don't have to watch your back always, like, like you know, JavaScript, you have to always watch your back. This is why when people from JavaScript watch my videos, they hate them and they say things like, hey, you don't know VS Code shortcuts, why don't you use plugins for autocomplete? And yes, I don't know those things, but do you know how to build a compiler from scratch in Haskell? Because I know how to build one. That's, that's what I tell them, right? So just learn from me what I know and ignore things that I don't know. We're all learning every day, okay? So the compiler is your, is your best friend. That's all you need to know. And okay, so the next video I'll make about the 100X developer and the myth of the 100X developer. So make sure you watch that as well. So um, the first thing is make sure you join the Discord for the official Discord for this YouTube channel. Uh, the link for that is in the is in my YouTube profile. And the second thing is uh, I'm also having a cohort, right? I'm I'm uh, so I, I'm not sure if you know this, uh, but about three months back, I started mentoring uh, engineers. Okay, so on my weekends, right, uh, is when I don't work. I know I don't work on my company and I mentor people. So I started mentoring people and then there was um, a lot of demand and I, I can mentor only two to three people at, at one point of time. So there was a lot of demand and uh, a lot more people than I expected. Uh, so what I thought was instead of mentoring them one to one, I can just have a cohort. So if you're interested in something like that, I, there is a link uh, to my cohort that's starting on June 1st uh, in the description of this video. Make sure you fill that form, okay? Uh, and, and then we can take it from there. Uh, now, um, the thing is, if you're watching this video after June 1st, uh, 2025, no problem. I will, I'm planning to have these cohorts like every three to four months. Uh, and they will be about system design. Okay, yeah, so I, I just forgot to tell you that they're going to be about system design. They're going to be about uh, cloud architecture, data architecture, that kind of stuff. So anything that you would really enjoy as a senior engineer, uh, you know, something that will help you in your um, interview rounds a lot, right, in critical companies, that's going to be the most important skill system architecture and all of that stuff. So that's what the cohort is going to be all about. So make sure you fill the form and um, all right, I'll see you in the next video.